Okay. Um, I think, yeah, as I said, it was kind of we've got a nice segue from the, the previous paper. I'm here really to talk to you about the kind of the um, medieval European Research Council manifesto for the Middle Ages, which was published in 2020. We've had kind of we had a, a series of plans to to pick up on kind of the, the amount of kind of groundswell of, of work that we did up to that point. Sadly, um, kind of COVID happened, and they, this is kind of an attempt to start breathing life into back into this process. Um, whilst myself and Stephen are um, we're meant to be presenting this, it is the product of kind of a large amount of other work which we'll come to. So some of you might be wondering who are Merck, the medieval European research community. It kind of really sits within the um, European Association of Archaeologists, the EAA, um, which hopefully most of you will know about. And there it is, kind of it. Is that working still? Um, so there, there's an mission, their mission statement is the aims to promote research through medieval archaeology into every country in Greater Europe by providing a hub for existing societies and researchers, leading practitioners in Europe and the rest of the world. And the important bit for, for this group, I think, is ethos is a medieval archaeology without borders. It has its origins kind of back in 1992. I think Martin Carver was involved um, in kind of a series of conferences about the archaeology of medieval Europe, and it's really taken from that point there. But whilst I haven't been around since 1992 as part of, of Merck, um, I think it was really searching for a, a vision and a way forward, where to go next. And the kind of the, the fulcrum for where we are now is really the kind of the EA in Glasgow in 2015, where um, a lot of the leading lights within Merck uh, kind of were exposed to the Scotland's archaeology strategy, which is a series of, of aims which you can read there, um, but it's really much about kind of a community process and trying to kind of embed archaeology in driving forward um, new processes. So, why do we have a manifesto? Um, fundamentally, the medieval matters, it's kind of fundamental to, to who we are as people within Europe. As we, you know, it's really when Europe today was formed in, kind of in a way that we can find recognisable today. And if you, hopefully while you're here, it's, you know, it's, it's in all the national origin myths for, for all, nearly every country that we come from. And just kind of using, kind of blatantly using kind of Edinburgh as an example, which you can go and visit for the next few days while you're here. I mean, you've got to look at kind of how, how Scottish identity kind of it relays itself back on the, on the built environments. It's everywhere around us. So we have Edinburgh Castle there, which some of you may know, a big kind of statement of medievalism and a kind of a city centre that's kind of sells itself on kind of a medieval and a recreated medieval past, which in itself then kind of feeds back into what it is to be Scottish. And uh, you know, there we have kind of, a, kind, of a, kind of an art piece from what was the, the kind of National Museum for Scotland, kind of early, well, Museum of Antiquities back in the day. Um, kind of just kind of all these figures from Scottish history kind of who make us what we are. And that's kind of the same in every European country I've ever been to. And it's ingrained very much in the places we live. So, I don't know, kind of, you've got kind of everything from kind of a hilltop enclosures to, to Italy to kind of um, Hagia Sophia in Istanbul, Strakai, it's kind of a, a, in, um, I get my country's not now, uh, Lithuania, you know, and that's it's part of the kind of national kind of founding myth, which is kind of been rebuilt, reimagined, and reconstructed in this kind of medieval form time and time again, and kind of again, kind of, kind of, you, well, you, I don't need to go through all that, but you can see that it's, it's embedded in kind of who we are and kind of the pictures that we can give ourselves when we're thinking about who we are and the world that we live in. So whether it's kind of rural landscapes, kind of towns, kind of churches, kind of the arts that we live in. And I'm very aware um, that what's missing from here is people. Can people can very much interact with the medieval world. And I'm just trying to find images that kind of couldn't be too contentious, but sadly I'm, I failed to find anything I was particularly comfortable with. But 
I think most people will have seen, if not directly, directly engaged in bits of medieval recreation and kind of acts of kind of social interaction that are kind of formed in that medieval image. But at the same time, you know, the medieval, as we've just heard, kind of um, the medieval has, gets abused, misses, and it's kind of quite often picked up by these nationalist agendas in, in a kind of, at the most extreme end, in a kind of a, a very negative way for society. And, you know, that, that can lean for just kind of being mis misunderstanding what's going on to sort of some kind of quite fundamental issues about kind of recreating modern society, kind of dependent on, on that, especially kind of using those nationalist myths. But as archaeologists um, or people that study the medieval period, we're kind of we're quite we're in a very unique place to respond through kind of research, and this is just I mean it's a very Scottish perspective, but kind of to recreate some of the points earlier on. Obviously, we've got Scotland and the Celtic fringe as a phrase earlier on, um, but it's very much tapped into this kind of huge kind of wider trade networks with kind of goods coming to Scotland, as you can see, and people uh, coming to Scotland. Kind of at various different periods in Scotland's past, and presumably there's kind of people and ideas kind of moving back. So even here on the Celtic fringe, those kind of European connections are there. We can pick up pick up on that, and we can directly respond to all those kind of the myths that kind of get developed. And I think one of the other things as researchers we kind of really struggled with as well, or we still struggle with, is kind of working together and kind of trying to whether that's kind of um across disciplines, so kind of kind of looking at kind of not kind of non Christian approaches to European identity. Kind of work very much working kind of from my perspective, I think it's very important that we as archaeologists and researchers in, in the medieval period, kind of how we then use that to influence decision makers and kind of create and kind of challenge those kind of the, both those discussions and kind of help influence the the, the world that we live in, kind of both physical and psychological. So, a uh, kind of archaeology, history, and heritage, I think, is very much in the front line of the response to a lot of those issues we've been discussing. We've been discussing, kind of, we really wanted to kind of think about kind of a, a call to action, a call to arms, how we could address that, uh, and very much like the suffragettes, we um, the law abiding, law abiding, no party meeting, set of meetings to take us forward. But that's not to say that we, we don't have a much higher kind of aspiration and we'd like to see ourselves very much within that manifesto tradition, very much a kind of a political statement with a small p about what we do and how we do it and how do we kind of get there. So we had we kind of formed a a drafting committee. Um, it's as you'll see from the, this photo, the drafting committee. We've got a few people from across Europe, but it was quite Scottish centred, which is something that kind of I'm hoping that people here today. We are hoping that people today will help us work through. And we had a series of workshops, um, both online and in person, kind of, at, kind of various EAA events and online, <coughs> where we kind of managed to discuss kind of various aspects of it, this uh, kind of various different elements. So I think we kind of, rec those discussions were kind of quite lively. There was a lot going on. I think we kind of boiled it down to kind of what do we want from our manifesto? some of these I've picked up on already, kind of how much, how do we kind of misunderstand, how do we counter the misuse of medieval archaeology and nationalist agendas? And that really very much came from a kind of our Eastern European colleagues and the Northern European colleagues who are kind of very much in the face of, of, of those agendas and how that gets misused, their work gets misused and abused. But it's relevant for any country, I think, in Europe. Um, how do we define the medieval? Um, this is spent a lot of time discussing that. We've got kind of, in some areas, people would have traditionally kind of thought about Rome, the end of Rome as being the beginning of the medieval. We've got places where Rome, Rome never turned up, didn't get make any inroads. We've got places that Rome kind of, the Roman influence kind of left, kind of fell quite early, and other places where it kind of never really ended. So places like kind of northern Italy and kind of parts of Germany where the, kind of the Romanist thing kind of went on and that kind of obviously kind of carries on to the end and I think one of my our Italian colleagues on the drafting committee kind of pointed out that the medieval period doesn't really end in Italy, parts of Italy, rural Italy until sort of the 19th, early 20th century. There's no real change in how that 
landscape is lived in and used and the technology within that. Um, and I think, as I've kind of hopefully indicated, we, we are kind of very much wanted to promote the idea of inclusivity and recognise the kind of that, you know, as Europeans, we like, kind of despite those national origin myths, we've been influenced from the outside and we've been influenced others, and that's very much part of, of the work that we do. And how do we kind of, that issue of kind of how we breach the divide from the researchers, so we're not just sitting in rooms talking to ourselves, how do we take that outside? How does it affect the built environment? Heritage managers like myself, and then ultimately kind of, how does that kind of inform and reflect back in the kind of decision makers that, such as politicians and that kind of na those nationalist debates about who we are. And in fact, fundamentally, I think we kind of, I think this, is, this kind of works for the whole of, of archaeology, but it's very much for medieval archaeology. How do we make other people recognise the social benefits of the work that we do? We were heavily influenced by some, some of our colleagues who kind of really promoted the, the idea of the heritage wheel, um, which we, I think we, we kind of lent on quite heavily to kind of to think through a lot of the issues that we've been discussing there. So it's kind of linking up how kind of people researching and kind of creating knowledge, how that understands kind of the society around us, kind of care and protect those kind of, how we kind of think about the places that we live in, how we protect those what it means for communities, and then that, that obviously kind of then kind of feeds back into kind of future researchers and it just kind of goes on and on. And there's a whole series of other aspects in there. So fundamentally, we kind of we have drawn together a manifesto. Those are the kind of the, the, kind, of, the kind of founding elements of our, our kind of call to arms. But I, I think, as I was saying, we're kind of we're at a point where we want to breathe life back into this. Um, and kind of next year we have the kind of EAA in Belfast. We've got events like this, and we're kind of we have a series of case studies as well, where we're kind of inviting people to contribute and sh show their work in kind of various different lights. So it's kind of open to you as the kind of the as researchers in the medieval community, and obviously the manifesto is there for you to to read as well. Thank you very much.